So I turn now to Banga. The, the treatment of patients with bleeding disorders at the Carnarvonshire and Anglesey Hospital in Bangor um, seems to have led to the establishment of an official haemophilia centre uh, in the second half of the 1970s. If we look, please, Shemekha's HSOC 0021833. This is a letter from Dr. Korn, who became the director of the centre when it was formally established, 5th of December 1975, to the Haemophilia Society. And we can pick it up in the first paragraph, four lines down. He says, we are trying to get treatment for haemophiliacs in this area and that we now have haematology cover and we are able to do tests for quantitative assays and screening and we have a supply of cryoprecipitate, cryoprecipitate and fresh frozen plasma. We have a small stock of freeze-dried factor VIII, but with the current economic situation, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to replace that particular substance as it is used. As you know, the situation about buying this expensive product is far from clear, and it's difficult for local authorities to find the extra money which might run into thousands of pounds. Um, so you'll see Dr. Korn was uh, trying to uh, uh, arrange for the establishment of a designated centre in, in, in Bangor in, in the 1970s. Um, uh, uh, and, and it was recognised as an associate centre uh, and submitted its first annual return, uh, uh, we think, in, in 1977. Because of its location in North Wales, it had links both with Cardiff and with Liverpool, and the Liverpool links were perhaps the more formally established links. Uh, and, and that gave rise to questions about from whom or to whom Bangor should look for its supplies. We can see that from CBLA 40438. Um, this is Dr. Korn to Dr. Maycock at BPL, September 1976. Uh, he says, Dr. Lahane in the Liverpool Regional Transfusion Centre has advised me to write to you about the availability of factor VIII concentrate through the National Blood Transfusion Service. And then he refers to being the haematologist uh, um, over what is geographically a very large area. Uh, says he has one or two haemophiliacs who'd be ideal candidates for home treatment. And then this, as some of the patients may have to travel up to 40 miles for treatment, it would be an advantage in suitable cases. Although I have a small supply of the commercially prepared concentrate, the area health authority is not prepared to finance supplies sufficient to treat even one patient on a permanent basis. I should be grateful if you could tell me whether factor VIII concentrate is available to peripheral hospitals through the NVTS, and I should also be interested to know your predictions about the supply of this product in the future. This is a question I've often been asked and feel unable to answer because I've heard so many varying reports from different sources. Your opinion would be of great value to me. Dr. Maycock's response is at CBLA 40442. At 14th of September 1976, he explains in the first main paragraph that the supply of fresh plasma for the preparation of concentrate at BPL is increasing steadily, and I hope it will be possible to begin a routine distribution at the beginning of November. Uh, he explains that um, a, a letters in draft form to be sent out, and then says this, the distribution of the available concentrate should be settled locally between those concerned. And I've taken the liberty of sending a copy of this reply to Dr. Delamore at the Manchester Royal Infirmary, to Dr. Dermot Lahane, and Dr. F. Stratton at the two RTCs concerned, respectively. And Dr. Lehane was Liverpool, Dr. Stratton, Manchester Regional um, Transfusion Centre. Uh, and then he says, hitherto we at BPL have distributed available concentrate in accordance with our, our assessment of the needs of patients referred to us. This is a most unsatisfactory method, but was preferable to distributing the relatively small supplies over the country, which would have resulted in insufficient being available in any given place to deal with a severe bleed. I hope it will be possible for those concerned in the Manchester, Liverpool and North Wales areas to decide how supplies are to be used. The amount of concentrate available in this area will possibly be in the order of, and then it looks like 290 um, times 200 and again, 50, like 250, I 250 think. probably. And um, that's international units. Uni units, bottles per month, exactly. Um, 
we, we don't need to go to the next lot of documents, but the, the annual returns for the Liverpool Royal Infirmary in 1976 and 1978 identify some patients treated there in, in Liverpool um, being also under the care of Dr. Korn at Bangor. And we've also got stock records from um, uh, what then became the Royal Liverpool Hospital showing that they distributed to Bangor Elstree Factor 8, Oxford Factor 9, and Armour Factor 8 uh, in 1980. Um, there's also some evidence, um, not, not least from uh, um, patients or, or, or family members with a recollection of, of, of treatment there, of links between Bangor and uh, um, the Haemophilia Centre in Cardiff. Uh, if we go to DHSC... 0001146 and th this is now moving forward to 1983 and it's a Mersey Regional Health Authority document it's a report of the director of the Mersey Regional Blood Transfusion Service um, but we can see there that what's described as the catchment area um, um, covering not just the Mersey region, but also North Wales, um, and, and uh, indication of population um, there. Um, and we know from this and other documents <clears throat> that the regional transfusion centre in, in Liverpool did supply both cryoprecipitate and whole blood to Bangor. Um, uh, um, and and that, that had been the arrangement, we understand, um, from, from other documentation for some decades. Uh, if we then... Turn to CBLA 40699. Um, this is a, 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 a list or table. It's, it's from 1977, but if we go over the page, you, you'll see it identifies different haemophilia centres by reference to what supra-region they belonged to. So it, it may be quite a useful document overall to understand the organisation um, and, and organisational arrangements as between different centres. If we go to page five, and we look at the bottom half of the page, we can see um, that Bangor, the various um, Liverpool centres... Manchester, Lancaster and Blackburn all fell within what was described as the Manchester Supra region. Um, if we turn then to the information from the annual returns, uh, looking first at numbers of patients treated at Bangor from 1977 to 1986, the number of haemophilia A patients treated ranged between 6 and 14 on an annual basis one patient with haemophilia B, and between three and seven patients with von Willebrand's disease. Uh, Shemek, if we can have HCDO 301133. This is the first uh, annual return submitted for 1977. We'll see in that year nine haemophilic patients, uh, one uh, Christmas disease patient. Uh, and we can see in relation to the patient with Christmas disease, the treatment is with the Oxford NHS concentrate. Um, uh, you'll see there's a cryoprecipitate in use, uh, but also NHS factor concentrate, and indeed that's the product in greatest use, followed by cryoprecipitate, and then a range of different commercial concentrates in, in smaller numbers, but, but four different concentrates there used, factor eight, co-8, haemophil, uh, and cryobulin. Um, if we move to 1978, HCDO 301226, page 3, what we see there is, is an apparent um, significant increase in the use of cryoprecipitate in, in 1978. So the figure's gone up to 137,620, and that's the main source of treatment, followed then by NHS concentrate, uh, and then by commercial concentrates, mostly the armour product. Um, uh, and then in 1979, HCDO 301296, 
we see a similar pattern. The, the, most of the treatment is with cryoprecipitate, 206,000 uh, odd units, uh, followed by NHS concentrate, uh, 81,500 units, uh, and then um, not in substantial volumes of commercial concentrate, just under 43,000 units of factor eight and 22,500 units of co eight. And if we then pick the picture up in at the following year at HCDO 301390, what we then see is a significant reduction in the use of cryoprecipitate. So 401 bags uh, used in hospital, which would equate to around 28,000 units. NHS concentrate, 21,500 units. And then the product in greatest use now are, is the commercial concentrate, in particular the armour product. Uh, 67,000 plus units in hospital. Um, and then armour's product and coate are used for home treatment. Um, then, uh, 1981, HCDO 301489. Um, here again, we can see the amount of NHS concentrate in use has, um, is, is comparatively small. And the main products in use, again, are commercial concentrates, predominantly hospital treatment. So, comparatively little by way of home treatment, although such home treatment as there is is with commercial concentrates. And four different concentrates, uh, commercial concentrates in use, factor eight and co eight, the largest uh, volumes, uh, and then haemophil and a small volume of cryobulin. Again, what, 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 is the, what causes that change and, and, and that shift in the increased use of commercial concentrates, whether it's conscious, deliberate choice, convenience, uh, supplies and shortages, we, we, we don't know. 1982 is at HCDO 301592. Here we see no cryoprecipitate used at all for haemophilia A patients. It is used for the treatment of von Willebrand's disease. NHS concentrate used in hospital only uh, to a relatively small extent. All home treatment is with commercial concentrates, and commercial concentrates form the majority of the treatment, in particular the armour product factor VIII, uh, but also CO8 and haemophil, and, and then a tiny amount of cryobulin. Um, the picture then for 1983, HCDO 301688. Again, we can see in 1983 no cryoprecipitate at all used other than for the treatment of von Willebrand's patients. Um, uh, usage of NHS concentrates that have, has increased. The product that is in greatest use is the cutter product, coate, and that's the sole product used for home treatment. Uh, and then uh, uh, the armour product used, um, hospital 27,000 odd. So again, we have more commercial concentrate than, than NHS concentrate being used in that year and, and no growth precipitate at all. And then lastly, the picture for 1984, HCDO 301784, sees a change. So here, a small amount of growth precipitate used, but now by, by far the uh, main product used is NHS concentrate. It's used for both home treatment and hospital treatment and used substantially more than commercial concentrate. So we can see the figures there, 126,785 units hospital and just under 27,500 units for home treatment. Commercial product is still used, just over 21,000 hospital, uh, just over 9,000 home treatment. It's all co in that year, um, but it, it's outstripped in terms of usage by, by NHS concentrate. Again, I'm afraid no way of knowing whether that's the reflection of a conscious response or, or simply reflects what was available. Uh, in terms of the transition to heat-treated products in Bangor, 
if we can look at BAYP four zeros, no, sorry, BAYP five zeros, two four underscore zero seven zero. Um, this is a, an internal cutter document, um, 5th of February 1985. It's an area report for January of 1985. If we pick it up under the second paragraph, all centres in this region, the region being North and Wales, have converted from non-heat-treated commercial material... Sorry, can we go further up? Sorry. Um, from non-heat-treated commercial material to heat-treated commercial factor A concentrate... Opinion seems to be divided, however, on the use of non-heat-treated NHS materials. And then it says the following centres are continuing to use non-heat-treated NHS material. And we can see um, that includes Wales, Bangor, Swansea and Cardiff. So that's the position um, described as at January of 1985. Um, by um, uh, February of 19... Um, 85. Uh, yes, we will just look at this. BAYP 5024 underscore 149. Um, second paragraph describes um, opinions still being divided on the use of non heat treated NHS material. Um, but if we go over the page, we're told in relation to Bangor towards the top of the page, D paragraph one, they have switched from regular to heat treated factor eight commercial material. Um, uh, and there are sales reports that we've got, um, I won't go, go through them um, later in the year, which seem to suggest Bangor returning unheated coate to Qatar um, and, and from time to time purchasing uh, coate HT. Uh, if we go then to BPLL 0001727, and um, this is a document that appears to have been generated in the context of um, the HIV hemophilia litigation. If we go to the second page, there's a letter from Dr. Korn, who was still the centre director in 1990, to Dr. Lane at BPL. Uh, and he says he's been requested to provide information with reference to heat-treated factor 8. Specifically, they are asking me when I first used heat-treated factor 8 concentrate in this district. My records show that NHS concentrate was supplied by the blood transfusion service for treatment of my patients in the first few months of 1985. I have a record of the batch numbers, but no indication in the record whether this was heat-treated. And then we can see um, th the information... Um, that, that's then been set out. So we've got a number of batch, batches listed, uh, one of which is identified as heated, HLA 3242, uh, and someone um, uh, has written all other batches unheated. Um, and, and that appears to be Jonathan Strom, um, who was based at BPL, um, who has identified those batches as being unheated. Turn to consider what, what little is known by way of Dr. Korn's knowledge of risks of viral infection. He, Dr. Korn was not a regular attender of UKHCDO meetings. Uh, he's I, identified as being present at the meeting in October 77 and a meeting in October 89. Um, and we don't have formal attendees identified for all meetings, so it is possible he attended um, um, uh, one or more others, but he's not down as attending most of them. But again, presumably as a recognised centre director would have been sent the minutes, the 1983 correspondence um, um, and the like. In, in, in terms of numbers infected, um, the data that we've received from UKHCDO suggests that four patients uh, were um, associated with Bangor were infected with HIV um, and they are identified as having or they're recorded as having been identified as such in 1985. In relation to hepatitis C uh, the inquiries received some evidence from individual witnesses but we have no contemporaneous documentation showing anything more broadly in terms of 
uh, um, po policies or practices. Uh, an inquiry witness treated with cryoprecipitate has described herself contacting Dr. Korn um, um, and um, then being tested for hepatitis C in the early 1990s. Um, another records learning of a hepatitis C diagnosis in 1991 by letter. Um, in, in, in terms of treatment arrangements, uh, again, you've received some evidence from individuals, and, and, and we've re referred to that in our written note. Um, there is one document um, which shows difficulties in uh, uh, treating those with, with uh, bleeding disorders and, and those infected with hepatitis and HIV in Bangor, uh, and that's CVHB 605 underscore 029. CVHB 605 underscore 029. No, oh, well, I can, I can describe it without, uh, I'm afraid we don't have it to display on screen. So you, you may recall, sir, from the evidence of, um, of uh, Professor Peter Collins, um, that in 2011 in Wales, uh, a um, task group was set up um, to examine issues relating to, uh, amongst other things, the, the care and treatment of individuals with bleeding disorders in Wales. Um, and a document prepared for that group described service provision in North Wales. And I'll just read a couple of the relevant um, sections from the document. Um, so, um, as at 2011, the description was as follows. The Haemophilia Centre in Bangor provides care for patients with bleeding disorders in northwest Wales. Currently, there are 130 registered patients, including 24 patients with haemophilia. Uh, and then this, given the remote location of the area, these patients are managed locally rather than having to travel long distances for specialist care. However, it is important that they're able to access a comprehensive service that is equivalent to that offered in other centres in Wales. There are several concerns about the current service provision and equal access to standards of care. And then specifically in relation to, to those with hepatitis, um, the document says that patients with inherited bleeding disorders who have hepatitis are referred to a consultant gastroenterologist for management and treatment of liver disease. The Bangor service has seven patients with hepatitis C. Uh, ongoing monitoring is undertaken in the haemophilia clinic. One patient travels to Cardiff for review in the joint hepatology clinic. Unfortunately, we are unable to undertake ultrasound scan monitoring of these patients for evidence of cirrhosis or hepatocellular carcinoma due to lack of resources in the radiology department. Um, and then in relation to HIV, the same document uh, says, and, and again, this is the picture as of 2011, the picture in earlier decades may of course have been very different that patients were referred to an HIV specialist unit that was part of the Mersey, Ch Cheshire and North Wales HIV managed clinical network and that patients had access to regional expert specialist input from Liverpool. Um, so that's the position um, um, described uh, as, uh, as at 2011. Um, that, that, those are the materials uh, relating to Bangor. We're going to now move to Yorkshire um, and Derbyshire. So we'll start with Derby. Um, so from the 1970s to 1990s, the Haemophilia Centre uh, um, for Derby was based at the Derbyshire Royal Infirmary. If we go to DHSC 01000026 underscore 068, This is a document from the Sheffield Regional Hospital Board um, from 1972, and it describes hospital arrangements for the diagnosis and treatment of haemophilia and allied disorders, recommendations of a meeting of haematology and pathologists with an interest in haematology held at Derbyshire Royal Infirmary, 5th of May, 1972. 
And then under the heading designation of centres for diagnosis and treatment, at the present time, there are four centres in the region where the diagnosis and treatment of haemophilia is undertaken. These are located at Sheffield, Derby, Nottingham and Leicester. The Sheffield and Derby centres are designated by the DHSS as haemophilia diagnostic and treatment centres. And then it goes on to explain that Sheffield was also a reference centre. Um, and then the next paragraph um, says that in the last sentence, says that improvements at Derby would be necessary if it was to retain its designation. Uh, and then if we go over the page, uh, paragraph four, bottom half of the page, we can see it said there, it was recommended that close contact should be maintained between the peripheral centres and the Sheffield Haemophilic Centre and the Regional Blood Transfusion Centre. Uh, a blood transfusion centre should be supplied with details and a blood sample from patients diagnosed as suffering from haemophilia or a similar condition. So Derby part of this regional network um, with Sheffield as its main um, local reference centre. The director of the centre at Derby until 1974 was Dr Wiley. He then left. Dr White was temporarily um, in charge. And then Dr. Winfield became director of the Derby Centre in around 1976 to, to uh, approximately 1982. Dr. Winfield then moved to Sheffield. From 1979, Dr. Main, Dr. Stuart Main, was a consultant haematologist at the centre, and he's listed as a director alongside Dr. Winfield in the 1979 return. And then Dr. Deirdre Mitchell, um, uh, worked at the centre, again, as a consultant haematologist. She and Dr. Main are identified as joint directors of the centre in the 1981 to 1983. And then at various points in the 1980s, sometimes she's identified as sole director, sometimes she's joint director with Dr. Main, and then sole director from 1987 onwards. Um, the inquiry has a witness statement from the centre's current director, Dr. McKernan, she took up that role in 1995. I won't go to her statement, but the reference is WYTN 3923008. Um, before we look at the annual returns, there are a couple of documents which just um, provide an indication of interactions with pharmaceutical companies in the 70s. The first is at SHPL 5071 underscore 155. This is an incomplete letter. We've only got the first page, um, so from an, an, an unknown sender um, uh, on behalf of a company based in Kent called Serological Products Limited. It's addressed to Dr. Eibel, the medical director at Immuno, and it describes a visit in February of 1973 to Dr. Wiley, the consultant haematologist at Derbyshire Royal Infirmary, he promised that if I was successful in my application for a product license for factor rate concentrate, he would use some, and if satisfied, would recommend regular purchases by the hospital management committee. This he has proceeded to do. Um, and then, um, I don't think we need to go into the detail of the rest of the letter, but uh, the author of the letter sets out some of Dr. Wiley's observations um, about uh, the product, um, uh, cryobulin. We'll see from the annual returns um, that uh, cryobulin does feature as one of the products used um, uh, at Derby. Um, th there's a follow-up letter at UHDB. So it's not a fact a follow-up. It's a letter from the same company, UHDB 5020. Serological Products Limited. This time we know the author, and it's almost certainly because of the initials, the author of the original letter, um, Norman Berry. Um, this is addressed to the chief technician at Derbyshire Royal Infirmary. It, it refers to there having been a, um, a kind reception given to uh, our medical representative in July 74, um, and then uh, provides an agreement for use of cryobulin on a regular basis. Uh, I, I think although you, you expressed doubt um, as to the authorship of SHPL 5071 underscore 155, I think that has also got uh, Same NB. Initiative. Yes. So it does look 
uh, as though it's, it's Mr. Berry reporting back to head office. Yes, I, I agree, highly likely. We don't have the second half of the letter, but you're absolutely right. It's the same initials, so it seems highly likely. That it I call it head office. I mean the, uh, the, uh, the overall holding company back in Vienna. Yes. Um, and then there's some um, in interaction between uh, Armour and um, Derby, this time with Dr. Win Winfield, who was the successor director. UHDB 5012... This is a letter in November 1977. You'll recall when we were looking at armour materials um, the other week, we looked at this factor 8, 1,540 donors um, uh, uh, input. Um, in any event, we can see um, this is Mr Bishop uh, writing uh, to Dr Winfield, uh, providing details of um, uh, the, the contract that's now been awarded in relation to factor 8 by the Department of Health, setting out the prices... Um, it says at the bottom of the page, as in previous years, we've tendered our best prices right from the start of the contract in order to ensure the least disruption to the work of your centre. Over the pay... Oh, sorry, it's not our intention to amend these, it says. And then over the page, we're very conscious of the fact that all centres are working to very tight budgets. We're also fully aware of the implications of the new contract prices in respect of maintaining or increasing current levels of treatment and home therapy programmes within the limits of these budgets. An analysis of the new terms will reveal the true economic advantage of placing some, if not all, of your commercial concentrate business with armour. Uh, and then we saw, I think, potentially this claim or a very similar claim again when we were looking at the armour documents. By purchasing factor eight against a given a sterling budget, your centre will be able to obtain between 50% and 97.5% more factor eight concentrate than other commercial products approved for sale on the DHSS contract. Uh, and then the next paragraph talks about the proven quality of the product, the flexibility of the presentation, and the economic advantages outlined above. Present, we feel, an overwhelming case for the inclusion of factor rate in your treatment program. Um, factor rate was used by the centre um, to, to an extent. Um, we'll, we'll look at it in a moment when we look at the returns. Um, but it's also relevant to note um, in the following... No, in fact, in the same year, 1977, if we look at ARMO 5013, um, there were reports of jaundice. So this is a letter, the 18th of May, 1977, um, from uh, Elizabeth Stockman, a registration officer with ARMA, reporting to the medical assessor on the Committee of the Safety of Medicines. Uh, and she says, we wish to inform you we've received reports from three centres of clinical jaundice occurring in haemophilia patients who have received amongst their various treatments our drug factor eight, and then the specific batch is given, P80006. The three centres concerned are Derbyshire Royal Infirmary 3, and then that leads um, and Nottingham. It's then said in all cases the hepatitis has been mild, the patients have all recovered, at present, we're pursuing these reports to acquire full details of the cases and will, of course, send you completed yellow forms as soon as possible. Um, and then towards the end of the page, it says um, that the cases do not follow a, a clearly defined pattern. Um, um, so those are some interactions uh, in relation to pharmaceutical companies and the centre at Derby. If we then turn to the annual returns... Um, starting with 1976, HCDO 40101 underscore 002. We can go to page two, please. We can see in 1976, 24 patients uh, 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 with haemophilia identified and then three with uh, Christmas disease. And then if we look at the product usage... Uh, by far and away, their main product used is cryoprecipitate. Very small amount of NHS concentrate. Uh, and then we can see three different types of commercial concentrate in use, mainly cryobulin, uh, just 39,500 or so, uh, and then the armour product, um, 10,299, and then 7,200 units of haemophil. Um, but compared with a tiny amount of NHS concentrate and a significant amount of cryoprecipitate. Um, there are four patients in that year um, 
on, on regular home therapy as well, but we, we can't tell, I think, from the returns um, what, what product they're receiving for that home therapy. If we go to 1977, HCDO 301153, we can see that cryoprecipitate is still the product in main use, 82,000 odd units, followed by cryobulin, 35,500. Um, there's been an increase in the use of NHS concentrate, so it's now nearly 27,500 units, but still not as much as cryoprecipitate or commercial concentrates. And then the armour product, just under 7,500 units. Um, if we then turn to 1978, HCDO 301252, page 5, Um, we can see that cryoprecipitate is still the product in greatest use in 1978, um, but only marginally, and the product um, used to almost the same extent there is the commercial concentrate cryobulin, nearly 97,000 units, uh, contrasting with just over 100,000 units of cryoprecipitate. NHS concentrate is used to a substantial extent, but not as much, uh, 65,335 units. Uh, if we then um, turn to 1979, HCDO 301416, um, we now have, sorry, that's 1980, forgive me, 1979 is HCDO 301319, sorry. Um, uh, uh, is a similar usage of cryoprecipitate to the previous year. Um, use of NHS concentrate has gone up a <coughs> little, um, but a greatly reduced reliance upon commercial concentrates in 1979. So cryobulin only just over 9,000 units. Uh, and that's in comparison with 77,000 units of NHS concentrate and 108,000 units of cryoprecipitate. Um, if we then go to 1980, HCDO 301416, um, we can see there, um, again, th three uh, products in use, cryoprecipitate, NHS concentrate, and cryobulin. Um, the product in greatest use is... Uh, um, I think the cryoprecipitate, yes, um, by some considerable margin, uh, uh, and then I think that's 121,000 probably that works out as, but only in hospitals. So cryoprecipitate not used for home treatment, um, and then we can see um, NHS concentrate used to some extent in hospital, but predominantly for home treatment, and cryobulin used both in hospital and for home treatment. Um, when we turn to 1981, HCDO 301514, um, we see now that cryobulin usage has declined still used but to a much lesser extent and factor 8 is in substantial usage um, but so too is cryoprecipitate and NHS concentrate so the figure for cryoprecipitate 112,420 uh, it's not, not a very great uh, reduction it's not, no um, NHS concentrate used substantially for home treatment uh, and factor eight used both in hospital and for home treatment. Um, so cryoprecipitate usage continuing um, later than we've seen with a number of other centres. So 1981 is still very much in use. Um, 1982 is at HCDO 301615.
we can see that whilst cryoprecipitate is still used, it, it, the volume is reduced. It's now just under 67,000 units and, and only for home treat. Uh, oh, sorry, only in hospital. The product now used to the greatest extent is, in fact, the Highland product, Haemophil, followed by the Cutters product, um, and then by NHS concentrate. Uh, and then last of all, cryobulin. So more commercial concentrate used uh, in, in 1982 and a broader range of different commercial concentrates used um, in 1982. Um, and if we turn to well, example page five, we will see these forms which show a number of patients being treated in the course of a year with multiple commercial products. So sometimes, sometimes two products, sometimes three, sometimes one. Uh, so no obvious policy of adherence to a singular type of concentrate. The picture then in relation to 1983, HCDO 301712, Um, we can see that cryoprecipitate is now very much a minority treatment in 1983. It's just under 30, so just over 29,000 units. Um, uh, the, the product in greatest use is coate um, in the region of 443,000 units split between hospital and home treatment. And then NHS concentrates a little over 300,000. So a, a marked shift from what we've seen in previous years. Uh, with Coate now dominating. Uh, and then lastly, 1984, which is HCDO 301807. A slightly different picture here. The product in greatest use now is the NHS concentrate. Cryoprecipitate still used, but not to the same extent as we've seen in earlier years. Um, so it's NHS concentrate followed by the coate, which is also used to a substantial extent, uh, and then profilate the alpha product, um, appearing for the first time on the returns. Well, how, how much would um, 662 bags be? I was hoping uh, at, at 70. Answer. You do the maths much more quickly than I do. Well, it, it looks like it being something in the region of 400 um, thousand units. So it's um. Unless I've added a, a, a naught. I think you might. Wrongly. Yes, you have added a zero. I'm told 46,000 46, behind me. And I'm looking at the maths I did last night with some of the earlier returns. 1,740 bags um, gave 121,000 units. Yes, that's right. So no. um, it, 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 it's, so it's not an insignificant amount of cryoprecipitate compared to some of the other centres, but it, it very much pales into insignificance compared to the use of concentrates, both NHS and commercial. Uh, oh, absolutely. Um, Turning then, sir, to knowledge of risks of uh, infection in consequence of use of blood products, again, the, the best evidence we have really is, is um, or the only evidence we really have is through attendance at UK HCDO meetings. Dr. Winfield was a regular attender. Um, uh, he attended the Haemophilia Centre Directors meetings in 77, in, in 78, and in 81. Um, we also see Dr. Main attending uh, in 82. Um, I think Dr. Winfield also um, is present in 83 at a number of significant meetings, although by that point in time, he'd moved from Derby to Sheffield, I think. Dr. Mitchell uh, attended UK HCDO meetings in 82 and 83. Um, just, just in terms of hepatitis in the 70s, there's a short sequence of correspondence that it may be worth looking at. Um, CBLA 
Um, th these are communications between Dr. Winfield um, from, from Derby um, and Dr. Maycock at BPL. The first letter uh, in March 1977 uh, describes uh, um, liver function abnormalities, but negative Australia antigen test. Um, if we look at the bottom of the page, we can see the products that have been uh, provided to um, the child patient, cryoprecipitate factor rate and Lister uh, factor. Uh, and then um, if we go to CBLA 0004156, There'd obviously been a response from Dr. Maycock, and, and then detail is given of units of cryoprecipitate used. So I should say this letter is dated the 13th of April, 1977. And then in the last paragraph, Dr. Winfield says this, I was wondering if the hepatitis could be of the short incubation type as described by Dr. Krask, or of the non-A, non-B type described in the Lancet of March the 12th, 1977. So shows uh, Dr. Winfield uh, um, up to date, as it were, with what was being described both by Dr. Krask and what was being published in, in um, the, the medical uh, literature. Uh, Dr. Maycock's response at CBLA 304155 says, uh, 19th of April 1977, in the second paragraph, um, uh, I've received your letter concerning the units of cryoprecipitate asking whether, in my view, the hepatitis could be similar to that described by Dr. Krask or of the non-A, non-B type described in the La Lancet. This is a difficult question to answer, and unless hepatitis B antigen or antibody is detected, the possibility of hepatitis A or so-called non-A, non-B should be considered, providing the incubation periods are compatible with either of those diagnoses. I'm afraid this is not very helpful information, and perhaps you might like to discuss this case with Dr. Krask, PHLS Laboratory, Manchester. Um, so some awareness in any event in, in the second half of the 70s, non-A, non-B hepatitis um, at um, uh, Derby. Um, we have no specific documentation in relation to uh, HIV, HTLV3, um, uh, uh, save through attendance at UK HCDO meetings and receipt of UK HCDO communications. Dr. Winfield did attend the immuno meeting in January 1983 at London Airport, as well as the reference center directors meeting in February 1983, where AIDS was discussed. Uh, but he was, um, by that time, I think, working in Sheffield rather than Derby. And um, uh, with no documentation um, casting any light on how the arrangements for testing for HDLB3 were undertaken or, or, or how and test results were communicated. There is, inquiry, uh, sorry, there is evidence the inquiry has received from uh, individuals treated at Derby or through their family members, um, which suggests, uh, in one case at least, a communication of diagnosis by phone, uh, and also provides some uh, evidence um, to suggest that in relation to a patient, a child patient admitted to hospital for, for, for treatment of something that it wasn't specifically uh, uh, haemophilia related, the staff treating him knew of the HTLV3 diagnosis in circumstances where the child uh, and his parents did not yet know. Um, and our, our written note gives details of um, uh, the, uh, um, that witness evidence. The only other document um, which casts any light on, then on how patients with uh, HIV um, um, were treated in Derby is at DHSC 0002269 underscore 083. And these are extracts from different haemophilia centre directors. The, the, the one in the middle is from Dr. Deirdre Mitchell, who was based at Derby, and she's, she was answering some form of questionnaire, and she says this, I've encountered numerous problems on the wards over the admission of two HTLV3 antibody-positive haemophiliacs, both requiring emergency surgery. 
The problems were due to hysteria and a lack of understanding both on the part of some members of staff and the families, and also because in one case a member of the hospital staff and in the other case the family alerted the media. We are learning, however, and are gradually drumming some sense into nursing and other staff. Um, so that provides perhaps a little insight into the position. Um, in terms of uh, zero conversions to HIV, if we go to INQY 40250 again, please, Shemek, and go to page three, um, you'll see, sir, four lines down the reference to Derby, centre number 42, and we have there 11 patients uh, testing in 1985, one in 1986, one in 1987, giving a total of 13 HIV cases associated with Derby. Um, and then if we look at uh, HSOC 0029690 underscore 003, please. These are the minutes of an executive committee meeting the Haemophilia Society in September 1988. If we go to page three, we see the heading grant applications about a third of the way down the page. And then there's a heading Dr. D.C. Mitchell, Derbyshire Royal Infirmary. So that's Dr. Uh, Deirdre Mitchell again. Dr. Mitchell had applied for funding in the sum of £6,900 to support the work of a part-time HIV AIDS counsellor. In presenting the recommendation of the officers, the chairman pointed out that a majority of the working party felt that this should fall to the regional health authority for funding and accordingly recommended that the application not succeed. Um, so it suggests at least an awareness on the part of Dr. Mitchell that this was something that was required. Um, whether there was in, in due course any funding made available by the regional health authority to the Derby Centre, uh, we don't have the answer to. In terms of... Um, uh, ongoing care of patients at the centre with HIV. Dr McKernan's evidence um, was that patients with HIV were managed by the genitourinary team and had been referred to that team before she took her, up her role at the Derby Centre in 1995. In relation to hepatitis C, Dr McKernan's evidence was that as far as she is aware, 26 patients were infected with hepatitis C at the Derby Centre in consequence of treatment with infected blood products. Uh, she has also said in her statement that when she joined the centre in 1995, um, all patients who'd received blood products in the relevant periods had been tested for hepatitis C before she was appointed. She was unaware of how the patients had been told and didn't know what steps had been taken by her predecessor. Uh, she does recall one patient who'd been tested um, who was negative uh, and says in her statement because that was a patient with severe haemophilia that seemed to her to be an unusual outcome so she arranged for the test to be repeated and it was then positive positive. and she also refers to a knowledge of one patient where there was a delay informing them of their diagnosis um, and she's not in a position to she says to explain the delay in in terms of treatment for hepatitis c she says that from 1995, patients with hepatitis C were referred to hepatologists. Um, so that's Derby. If I can then turn to York. And the York Haemophilia Centre, based at York District Hospital. Um, the centre director from around 1974 was Dr. Cedric Wiley. We come across his name, obviously, in relation to um, uh, um, Derby already, but he, he was moved to York. Uh, we've no evidence, I'm afraid, directly from any clinicians um, uh, who were based at the centre in York. Uh, Dr. Wiley was the director until uh, uh, the early 1990s. We don't have a clear picture of the facilities or staffing at the centre in the 70s and 80s, but you do have an account from an individual patient who describes there being, at least in the 60s, no separate centre and, and treatment through the haematology department. Um, the, the sum evidence of the policy in relation to home treatment 
at WITN 1688005. This is a letter from Dr. Wiley um, to a pediatrician, and if we just look at the second paragraph, it's October 1978. It says, it's clearly the policy that haemophilia should be made, sorry, haemophilia should be made self-reliant now that there's a satisfactory availability of effective and continuing therapy. Um, we also um, have, again, in relation to individual patients, evidence of um, treatment of a child with uh, uh, commercial concentrates. Um, if we go to WITN 0995004, Um, th th this um, is an extract from treatment records for a child treated at the York Centre, and we can see there a pattern of NHS treatment, and then in October 1979, armour, and that's for someone who was um, around the age of nine at the time. Um, I won't go to the witness statement um, um, of the family member um, talking um, uh, about the treatment um, of their son, I'll give you the reference there only, it's WITN 0995001. But that statement describes their son being treated mostly with NHS Factor 8, but receiving armour Factor 8 when the NHS product was not available. Uh, and we can then pick up the, the picture of, in terms of what products were used at York, again from the annual returns, beginning in 1976, HCDO four zeros, sorry, five zeros, 66 underscore 004, page 5. So we have 10 patients treated at York in 1976, predominantly at that point in time with cryoprecipitate, um, but with uh, a small volume of cryobulin also in use, 4,000 units. Uh, if we then go to 1977... HCDO 301223, page 3. Um, we can see for the treatment of nine patients in that year, NHS concentrate becoming available. Cryoprecipitate is still the main treatment in use, 45,000. Uh, uh, 6,645 units of NHS concentrate. Uh, and then uh, both the armour product factor 8 and the immuno product cryobulin also in use at the centre in 1977. Uh, if, um, we don't, I think, have a return for 1978. If we, if we go to 1979, HCDO 301387, we see a rather different picture emerging for the treatment of 12 uh, patients that year. Cryoprecipitate usage has um, uh, plummeted, 300 units that described as, as, as uh, used. The main product used in that year was NHS concentrates, just over 62,000, but also just under 10,000 units of the armour product were used. At 1980, HCDO 301486, Again, shows little use of cryoprecipitate. We've got the split now into uh, hospital and home treatment, um, and we can see that the uh, treatment in most use is NHS concentrate, followed by factor eight and then cryobulin. Um, and we can see, if we look on the right-hand side of the page, that commercial concentrate, or a commercial concentrate, was also used in the treatment of a patient with von Willebrand's. If we go over the page, uh, we can see again from the forms in relation to individual patients more than one type of concentrate, and indeed more than one type of commercial concentrate being used for the treatment in that year of individual patients. Um, then 1981 is HCDO 301589. 14 haemophilia A patients treated that year, one haemophilia A carrier, one von Willebrand's patient. No cryoprecipitate used at all 
the, the predominant treatment is with NHS concentrate, both in hospital and at home. But there are also four different types of commercial concentrate used, factor VIII, CO8, haemophil and cryobulin for both hospital and home treatment. Um, then, um, 1982 is HCDO 301685. Uh, slightly different picture here. Again, no cryoprecipitate um, at all for haemophilia A or von Willebrand's patients. Uh, um, the main product in use and the only product indeed used for home treatment is NHS concentrate in 1982. And then the armour product is used to just over 16,000 units in hospital. No other commercial concentrates in use that particular year. Uh, at 1983 is HCDO 401471002. Should be page six. Um, and again, we can see no cryoprecipitate used. Uh, the main treatment is NHS concentrate, but also um, in, in reasonably substantial quantities, the armour product factor eight. Um, and factor eight again being used for the treatment of a patient with, or patients with von Willebrand's. Uh, and then um, the return. Um, for 1984 should be at HCDO 301874. It's a similar picture. Uh, NHS concentrate is the main product in use, uh, but also uh, a significant usage of the armour product factor eight. Uh, in, in that year, von Willebrand's patients treated only with NHS concentrate and, and no cryoprecipitate usage again shown. Um, in terms of um, knowledge of risks of viral infection, there are, as with many of the centres, a handful of uh, letters or, or, or reports of jaundice in the 1970s uh, and completion of hepatitis um, survey uh, forms. Um, there is... Um, uh, some attendance by Dr. Wiley of, at UK HCDO meetings in the course of the 1970s. Um, he's an infrequent attender, however, uh, although, again, would presumably have been sent the minutes uh, and associated reports that were pre-circulated. Um, the, the data um, from UK HCDO in terms of the uh, um, numbers of patients infected with uh, HIV at the centre is at INQY 40250. Um, page two, please. Sorry, page three. Centre 50. So York, Centre 50, um, identifies four patients uh, in 1985, one patient in 1987, um, giving a total of five uh, patients um, by 1988. Um, in, in, in relation to how the diagnosis of, of HTLV3 was communicated, again, there's, there's nothing by way of contemporaneous documentation, but the inquiries received witness accounts. Indeed, one of the very first witnesses uh, um, that uh, the inquiry heard from described uh, learning... Uh, the, the, his HIV diagnosis um, from Dr. Wiley, um, having proactively sought testing in the course of 1985, no one from the hospital having contacted him to be tested. Um, 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 and we've um, provided details in relation to that witness in our, in our written note. Um, 
in relation to another patient um, one of the few documents we have available is at NHBT 0096474 underscore 035 um, this is the letter in 1988 um, the purpose of the letter is not clear from it says, I confirm this haemophiliac has been in receipt of the various products as supplied by the health authority for the treatment of this haemophilia. I can also confirm that he is seroconverted and is now HIV positive. So it's unclear whether this was a late test uh, um, or, or simply something being reported with, with testing having been undertaken earlier. Given the circumstances, the presumption is that this is the result of administered contaminated factor eight, but it's not possible to identify which batch and when this occurred. Um, you, you do, sir, have evidence from um, the, the family associated with that communication. Um, I, I won't take you to it. Um, the, the reference uh, for your notice, WITN 0995 um, 001, um, which describes um, the mother asking Dr. Wiley whether it was safe for her son to continue on factor eight treatment. Uh, um, uh, and that was in, in light of um, television documentaries, um, was the recollection. And being told that her son would be at greater risk of stopping treatment than he would of continuing with the theoretical risk of contracting the disease. Um, there is also evidence um, of a partner being infected with um, HIV at HSOC 0013446 underscore 012. This is a letter from Dr. Wiley, oh, um, still at, based at York in April 1989 to the McFarlane Trust describing the, the situation of, of one of his patients. An excellent, hard-working and bright young man whose life has been, like many others, blighted from these circumstances for which he is now making a claim. He is a severe haemophiliac with moderate restriction of movement of his limbs, on top of which, of course, acute episodes occur. He's had a stable relationship with the girl mentioned who unfortunately has become HIV positive and is herself unwell. Um, uh, and then, if we look at the last paragraph, after a description of the position of the haemophiliac patient, Dr. Wiley says, as I'm sure you understand, the circumstances are extremely sad and the prognosis for both these young people must be regarded as very, very poor. And we don't, I'm afraid, have information in relation to the number of patients infected with hepatitis C um, through treatment at the York Center. Um, you have received uh, witness accounts from individuals treated there who were indeed infected with hepatitis C. Um, so, so that, that's York. Um, I'm, I'm going to move next to the West Midlands. There's quite a lot to cover with Coventry, a smaller volume of documentation in relation to the others. And there should be no difficulty in completing that this afternoon. But can I suggest rather than starting it now, we, we break and then start at 10 to 2? Well, let, let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, 10 to 2.